Uh, was... Good morning. So thank you for the outline, um, Claire. Um, specifically, the reason I'm talking to you today about cracking a career change is three years ago, I left the safety and the privilege and the wonderful job of working as a BBC news correspondent to try something different, to come to Cambridge and follow my uh, dream to become a teacher, a trainer, a tutor here, and um, also to have my own business. And I've managed to do that, and that I suppose is the key to me talking today about cracking a career change. So um, first question, who would like uh, some of the most important secrets? Who would like to know some of the most important secrets in successfully cracking a career change? Anybody interested in that? Hands up, yeah. good. Okay, you're in the right place, and that's good. Okay, so let's start with um, a little game which has a point, a bit of fun, and um, wow, we all need some fun at the moment, but it has a serious point to it. Sort of game you sometimes see online, films in one line, um, describing well-known films in just one line. And I'll explain to you in a second the point of this, but um, let's have a little bit of fun, see if you can guess them for me. Uh, strange group of friends spend nine hours returning jewelry. Any guesses what that is? Any guesses? Now, I've lost my chat box, so Sarah and Claire, you're going to have to tell me when okay. people are guessing. So yes, what have we got? I'm trying to guess myself. Um, Strange group of oh, friends. Okay. Yeah, Ocean's Nine. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> okay. Think fantasy, famous series of films, books. Think a strange land, wizards and orcs, armies and battles and all that. Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings, got it. Who got that? <laughs> Well, uh, Paul was the first with Lord of the Rings. Well done, Paul. Okay, you get a gold star. Well yeah, done. Yeah, All and right. John, yeah, we've got several others that have got it. Okay, so that's Lord of the Rings. What about this one? Fishing trip goes fatally wrong. Just five words. What's that? What famous film is that? Oh, I think I know this. Oh, yeah. And John, again, Jaws. John, two gold oh, stars. John, well done. Sorry, it was Paul last time. Yeah, well done. <laughs> Absolutely right, Jaws. Or if you want to go back to Victorian times, I suppose it could be Moby Dick. Moby Dick. But yes, Jaws. What about this one? Mad factory owner maims children one by one in front of their parents. Oh, I know this one. <laughs> You're allowed to, but only later. What do we reckon to that one? Oh, yes. Um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, spot on. It takes on a completely different look, doesn't it, when you think about it that way? And that was the genius of Roald Dahl, to entertain us with horrors. Um, let's do three more. Leonardo DiCaprio wanders a frozen wasteland in search of an Oscar. Anyone recognise that one? Film really? from a few years ago. Any guesses? What we got, Claire? We've got Titanic, but I don't think it is that. No, 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 it is. What do you think it is? Remember that one where he, he goes through the... F what do you Revenant? think? Revenant. Revenant. Very good. Yeah, it's the Revenant. Revenant. Yeah. And he got his Oscar and he deserved it for that ordeal. What about this one? Girl hits head, dreams about fancy shoes. Very famous film, 1940s. Oh, The Wizard of Oz. Oh, very good, absolutely. Who got that one? That was Elisa got that one first. I don't mean to inflict my singing on you. I won't do that again, I promise. Um, and last one, Father and Son Don't Get Along, Universe Suffers. What's that? Two words. Oh. Star Wars. Um, yeah, that's it, absolutely. Okay. And that was Wilson E. Well done, okay. So shower gold stars on everyone. Um, a little bit of fun, and of course we need it at this time with the, um, the strangeness of coronavirus. Um, why am I playing a little game like that to start with? It's because uh, it's really important to remember that people judge very quickly in life, and you have only a few seconds to grab their attention. It's, um, it's commonly said in the research that in a job interview, for example, uh, the panel, the interviewers make up their mind very quickly. If you're trying to grab someone's attention at an event, and you're trying to get work, or you're trying to get on with them, you have to interest them very quickly. So the first thing we're going to look at is kind of a parallel to films in one line, and it's this, it's the value proposition. Value proposition, if you like, is the core message of any business, and it's summing up why I should be interested, why I should care about you. You only get a very few words for a value proposition, maximum of eight or nine words. And in that, you've got to interest me, say something about yourself and intrigue me into wanting to find out more. So let me give you some examples. Value propositions of businesses. Why are you looking at um, superheroes bashing each other up there? Because the way to think about value propositions, the way I often frame them, is a heroes and villains approach. The villain is the problem you are solving. The hero is you or your company coming to the rescue to save us from this problem. Here are the examples. Digit, 
Now, Digit is an app which allows you to, as the value proposition says, save money without thinking about it. Just six words. What's the problem? We all struggle to save money these days. And Digit, here they are, riding to our rescue to save us from that problem. They analyze your spending and just put away a little bit every day. Save money without thinking about it. Just six words. Clever. Heroes and villains approach. And also makes you feel good about it as well. You think, oh, I'm saving money. I'm not even thinking about it. Smart. Crazy Egg, make your website better instantly. So Crazy Egg is a company that analyzes your website, sees where it's working well, where people are clicking on, looking at stuff, where they're clicking away. Just five words for their value proposition. Make your website better instantly. Problem, your website's not working. Solution, here's Crazy Egg writing to our rescue to save us from it. Makes me feel good about it, just five words. And here's another one you all know, Uber. Tap the app, get a ride. Genius, just six words. I've got a problem, I can't get a taxi, there's my issue. Tap the app, I've got a taxi, all is sorted. Just in six words. Information in all of those, interest, intrigue. Makes me want to find out more. So it will help you in your search for a job or a new career when you're talking to people, when you're being interviewed. If you can sum up why I should be interested in you, what you offer, how you can make my life and my business better in just a few words. So those are business examples. But let me now translate that to personal examples. Here, for example, could be my value proposition. One-stop shop for all your communications needs. That's basically what I do. I teach public speaking, I help with websites, with media stuff, and I can do the whole lot, me and my company can. So one-stop shop for all your communications needs. Your problem, you need your comms sorting, we can solve it, whatever it is you need. With the other ones, let's do a little bit of a quiz for these. I've made these up, so see if you can get these. Tub thumping election winner against the odds. Who might that be? Whose value proposition might that be? Any guesses? Claire, you're going to have to help me again here. Anybody That's coming through with any guesses? Not yet. We're having some. Oh, Boris? Ah, spot on. Who was that? Um, that was John. Well done, John. Very good. Tub thumping election winner against the odds. That could be Boris's. He wins elections against the odds, whether it's general election or whether it's a Brexit thing. What about this one? Very simple. Young, passionate, green. Who might that be? Who might that be as a value proposition? Greta. Yeah, good. Who was that? That was Grant Neville. Great, excellent. So you see how it sums up young, passionate, green, what she does, problem, environmental issues, she's going to help us solve them. And what about this one? Tylo, the entrepreneur who turns ideas into reality. He actually genuinely uses that. Very well-known entrepreneur, massive businessman. Clary guesses on that one? John? Who? Elon Musk? No. No, no, a bit. Yeah, who got that? That was from Mel. Thank you, Mel. Really, really good. Excellent. Really, really good. So that's the value proposition. The important point is that people judge very quickly and people are busy. Average attention span is probably only about 10 seconds, according to research. If you're at an event, some networking thing, there's someone important, you want to grab their attention because this could be an opportunity. You need to interest them immediately by telling them why they should be interested in talking to you and a value proposition will help with that. So I'm gonna do a few interactions with you um, today. Uh, so take a couple of minutes now, just to think if you can come up with your value proposition for you, why we should be interested in you, what you offer. Heroes and villains approach, what problem do you solve? How do you solve it? Maybe a little bit of sense of your character, make me feel good about you. And only in eight, nine, 10 words maximum. So let's take a couple of minutes to do that. And if you come up with something and you're happy to share it with us, then uh, send Claire a message. Just send her an OK. You don't have to type the entire answer into the chat box. Just send Claire an OK. And if you're happy to share it with us, then we will then, un well, you can unmute yourself and then we will hear from you. But take a couple of minutes to think about that. It's really important to sum up crisp, sharp, straightforward with impact and intrigue, what you are, what you do, your value proposition. So just have a think about that for a couple of minutes and then we'll hear some of your answers. a lot of thinking faces good thinking faces is good we like thinking faces are any faces thinking and actually typing into the chat box that they're desperately keen to share their value proposition with us <laughs> there's yeah. 10 gold stars for this one yeah we've got a few here so um okay. 
Well, let's just give it a little longer because I want everybody to have a chance with this. Um, this can be really, really useful to you. Really, really useful. Just thinking how you sum up why someone should be interested in you straight away. And it can make such a difference if you get someone and you make a good first impression. It's the old story. You don't get a second chance to make a good first impression. Right, so Claire, how many people have, um, have, have kindly volunteered their services to uh, read their value proposition to us? Yeah, we've got two that are happy to, um, oh, hold on, two that are happy to share, and then there's, um, two, there are two people that have actually written their value proposition in. Okay, well, let's do a little yo-yo a, a then. So let's have, okay. first of all, our first guest. Now, no pressure for our first guest, but you're our first speaker in this important webinar. So you, <laughs> it's all relying on you. Either it works or it doesn't for you. Who are you going to choose, Claire? Who's going to be our first guest? Okie doke. Let's go with Howard. Howard, okay. Howard, take the floor. It is yours. I don't know whether, Sara, you need to unmute Howard. But, yep. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, so my second attempt, I think I'll go with, um, broadening your perspective, broadening your thinking. Oh, I like that, Howard. I think I could do with some of that. Are you available? Of course. <laughs> really good. So you've got broadening your heart. Just six words, and that's really interesting. Good. Thank you. Yeah, are you happy with that? I mean, obviously, you can work on it a bit more. I've just asked you to do that in two minutes. But... Yeah, it, it, it doesn't quite get to purpose, but that hopefully is the next thing which says, well, hang on, I need to know more. Yeah, absolutely. And it intrigues me to wanting to find out more. Okay, great. Thank you, Howard. Um, Claire, would you read one of the others that we have? Yeah, absolutely. So we have Emma Jennings, um, helping top organisations acquire graduate talent. Oh, great, Emma. Absolutely nailed it in one. Really, really good. Thank you. Really, really good. I mean, just isn't it remarkable how so few words can immediately like, tell me what you do and make me, oh, that's good. I want to find out more. And that's really important stuff. Terrific. Thank you, Emma. Um, Claire, who is the next person who has volunteered to join us on the stage? Okay, we have, I only have a company name, um, but it's M, L and C training. It's, it's Diana, sorry. Oh, Diana, sorry, hi. Because <laughs> I'm using this one for training. Um, no so, uh, helping, you do, helping you do what you do even better. Oh, that's nice as well. Yeah, so making you even better at what you do. Yeah, that's great, yeah, that's really you good. Yeah, I even, uh, even better. Yeah, no, that's really good because everybody wants to improve, don't they? Really good. Oh, and there's cool. a sort of assumption that you're already doing it well. So it's, yeah, yeah, and we can all do with sometimes refreshing our thinking and challenging ourselves, can't we? Really good. Thank you. Oh, we've got a great group of people. Oh, I like this. This is fun. Um, Claire, what was the other one that you had to read out for us? Okay, um, so from Hillhead Smiths, this one's Collaborative HR Professional, Informing and Empowering Your Team. Brilliant. You lot don't need me. Go away and have a coffee. You don't need any of this. That's fantastic. Really, really good. Okay, great. Now let's move on. But that's the value proposition. It's really important to be able to articulate just what you are. Very short, sharp and simple. Because you've got to grab the attention quickly in the modern world. You've got to get someone from the start. Really good. Excellent. Thank you. Great examples. Okay, so you've got your value proposition. That can now become the core message of everything you do. Strange how incredibly powerful value propositions are. When you get it right, it can be the core of your, your website, any presentations you do, talking about yourself, job interview applications. Come back to that core message and you won't go far wrong. But how do you build on that? Well, this is something you'll all know. A rather grimy elevator, but nonetheless an elevator, the elevator pitch. So imagine you have just smashed it with your uh, value proposition and you've started talking to someone and you've laid that one out and they're interested. Where do you go from there? Well, you all know the principle of the elevator pitch. The idea is you're in an elevator ride with someone really, really important. You've only got between floors, which is about 25 seconds to really impress them and get the opportunity of a follow-up, a follow-up meeting, a follow-up chat to further your agenda. So what's in an elevator pitch? Only 25 seconds you get, or 75 words or so, so not an awful lot. Grab the attention immediately and you'll see how the value proposition helps with that. Establish your credibility. It's not good enough just to say what you do. You've got to show what you do. Don't forget to introduce yourself. It's only polite. And include a call to action. Find some way to get a follow-up conversation with this really important person. Let me give you some examples. This is a business I work with at the business school in Cambridge at the judge. This is a, um, a clever disruptor of the legal service. What do you think about your legal bills? Way too high, right? What if I told you I could get you the same quality service for half the price and double the convenience and I can prove it because I've already done that for dozens of clients. 
I'm Sean Ed from Legal Sphere, and if you give me your card, I'll give you a call or arrange a meeting to show you more. Now, how about that? Immediately grabs you. There's the value proposition. Your legal bills are too high, but I'm going to cut them. Establish your credibility. I've already done that. I've done it with lots of companies, and they are, and they're doing really well. Introduce yourself. Don't forget, it's only polite. And then there's the call to action. Give me a card. We'll arrange a meeting. I'll follow up more. So the idea is you've hooked the person, and now you've got to follow up to talk further. Give you another one. Let's talk about people. Fictitious people, nonetheless. I'm a wizard with a proven track record of defeating the evilest of evil. I vanquished Voldemort in forests by lakes and even triumphed when he invaded Hogwarts itself. I'm Harry Potter. I'm looking for new opportunities in the wizarding world. Now Voldy is history. So if you want to fix the time, let's take a scenic broom ride and we can talk more. I'm really sorry about my imagination. But you get the point. So grab them with a the value proposition. I'm a wizard who defeats evil. Establish your credibility. I've beaten Voldy in all these places. Now he's done with, I'm looking for something else, so I'll introduce myself. And there's the call to action. Call to action so we can find out more and perhaps come up with a partnership and maybe some work. And a final, um, final example for myself, I'm a one-stop shop for all your communications needs. So see how the value proposition goes at the start to grab the interest, establish my credibility, working with Google, the Beeb, University of Cambridge, government departments, and all the stuff I do with them as well. Introduce myself, run my own comms agency, writer, former BBC, and I'll be happy to set up a Zoom call to talk further. Of course, it would be a Zoom call these days. However, so that's your elevator pitch, okay? The value proposition tends to start it off to grab the attention, expand on that by establishing your credibility. Don't forget to introduce yourself. Call to action is critical. You don't want to make a good impression. Think, hey, where's this person gone? How do I find them again? And then only in 75 words, 75 words or 25 seconds. So again, let's do another little interaction for, for three minutes or so. Start to sketch out your elevator pitch. You've already got the start, I would suggest, with the value proposition. Now go on to establish your credibility. Work out how you introduce yourself and get the call to action in there and do all that in just 75 words or 25 seconds. And again, if you'd be kind enough and you're happy to share it, you don't need to type it in. Just saying clear and OK. If you're happy to share it, come onto the stage with us and tell us what you come up with. Have a couple of minutes to think about that while I have a sip of coffee. And I do know I'm asking a lot of you to come up with an elevator pitch in just three minutes. But remember, if you can get the skeleton here, you can always work on it later until you're happy with it. And you'll probably find it changes as well. You'll just evolve it. You think, oh, I can make it a bit better here. I can make it a bit better here. But the great thing about an elevator pitch, value proposition and elevator pitch, if you have them in mind and that critical moment comes up when you meet someone really important, it could be a real break for you. The number of times I've seen people do that and go blank, like, oh, I, 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 uh, I'm, I'm, and the, the opportunity is gone. But if you've got it firmly in mind and you're ready anytime you need it, it's extremely helpful. It's a great weapon in your armory, in business, in getting a job, in anything. If you can sum up why someone should be interested in you and then expand on it with the elevator pitch. Really useful. Right, so Claire, has anybody been brave enough to um, give us an okay? We have a very brave Alistair. Hi, Alistair. Alistair? Okay. Alistair. I'm just... Hi. Good morning. <laughs> I'm good, thanks, Claire. Hi, Simon. Hello, Alistair. Uh, right. Hello. Hey, big yeah. deep breath. Take the stage, yeah. Alistair. Let that lovely, booming, bassy <laughs> voice of yours run. Thank you. Um, I'm a CTO with over 20 years of technical experience, working with uh, companies such as Microsoft, uh, Accenture, uh, also the British Council, government departments. I specialize in clear communications securely, um, and I'm able to express uh, those uh, skills using uh, software websites. Uh, and writing custom uh, proprietary secure software on hardware for companies. 
and that's my specialism. So I'd like to hear more from you and perhaps we can arrange a Zoom. Yeah, and don't forget to introduce yourself as well. Yes, I'm Alistair, sorry. Yeah. Yes. That's, all right, Alistair. <laughs> that's absolutely great. Really, really good. Wow, you've got a range of skills there, haven't you? You're hired, Alistair. Thank you. That's great. Right. Thank no, you very really much. Good. Really good. Thank you. Claire, has anybody else been um, good enough to volunteer? Yeah. yeah, we've got a couple more. Um, so we have Pam. Pam. Hi. Hello. Take Hello. the stage. Okay, here I am. Can you see me? Yeah. All right. I'm in an elevator pitch. I'm in an elevator and I'm saying to a minister, uh, the creative industry sector is a substantial contributor to the UK economy and a growing professional destination for many young people. But there are low economic returns, earnings of creative subjects are low, and there is real, uh, what is the word, in, in uh, issues in terms of widening participation and inequalities. Uh, I am a professor of arts, creativities and uh, educations, and I can offer solutions to how uh, to, to create a more equitable society. Cool. Contact me. Cracking, Pam. Don't forget to introduce yourself. Let's say, I'm Pam and blah, blah. I'm a professor. But that's beautifully done. Really, really done, Pam. Great. Thank you so much. Really, really useful. Good. Okay. It's good, isn't it? It's good. This. Oh, I hardly have to do anything. It's great. My, my sort of training. Um, Claire, have we got anyone else who wants to play? Yes, we have an Emma. Emma Jennings. Emma! Hi. Hi, everybody. Okay. I'll give it a go. So I help top organisations to acquire graduate talent, having managed uh, and recruited large teams at IBM, the University of Cambridge and run my own businesses. I know how to spot and develop leadership potential. I'm Emma Jennings. I'm currently a careers advisor at Anglia Ruskin University, and I'd love to set up a brief call to discuss how I can help you. Emma Jennings, you are also a master of how to do the elevator pitch. Thank you very much. That was absolutely brilliant. Well done. Claire, does anybody else want to contribute or is that? Um, no, I think that's everyone. That's great. Emma, that was lovely. Thank you. Really good note to move on. So brilliant, brilliant. So you value proposition first of all and see how that expands out to your elevator pitch. And always keep that in mind because the thing about the opportunity is it will inevitably come up when you least expect it. And if you're caught floundering, you can lose the chance. But if you've got your elevator pitch ready, you can hook the person and you've got an open door. Whereas before you might have missed the opportunity. So great. Really, really good. OK, um, let's move on. <clears throat> thinking about cracking a career change and finding a new job. The basics um, in communications terms, <clears throat> what we've just done, the value proposition and the elevator pitch are the basics. But what else do you need to think about when you're actively looking for a new job? or a new career? What do you need to prepare? What do you need to have ready so you are not caught short when that moment comes, that moment of opportunity? Um, let's have a little, little uh, interaction. Would you type some thoughts to me? What else should you be thinking about? Are there things you should have with you, things you should be aware of, things you should be doing? What else should you have physically available to you when you're hunting for a job or looking for a new career? Claire, what have we got? Anybody offering anything? Okay. Yeah, we've got CV, um, contact details, yep. card, yeah. uh, Zoom account. Yeah, cool, good one. I hadn't thought of that yet. Your achievement. Yeah, yeah. great. LinkedIn profile. Yeah, oh, hey, these people don't need me. They've got it all nailed. This is fantastic. Yeah, anything um, else? This one's good. We get, um, get references from all previous jobs Yeah. Uh, when you leave um, rather than having to go back to them years later. Yeah. That's a really good point. Um, proof of interest in the new field to overcome lack of experience. Brilliant, yeah. As well, <clears throat> what the market needs, show evidence in your achievements, um, current development work, study and background on transferable skills. Well, I must say you're all ahead of me. Um, this was a little list that I put down, which I thought of, but there's some excellent thoughts there. And actually, when we have a community like this all working together, it's really, really helpful because you've made me think about things I hadn't thought of. And I guess you were with some of the others on the line as well. So these are the things I thought of. Business cards, really easy to have done. Make it sh smart, but simple. Not too flashy, just straight. Very, very easy to have done and have them with you. That could be your call to action when you do your elevator pitch. CV, of course, keep it up to date. Um, you could have a physical copy with you. I did when I first started looking 
in Cambridge for my new career, you certainly want to have an electronic copy with you. So it's there on your phone, you meet someone, you can send it very quickly. Testimonials, I think, are important. We can all say how great we are. It's much more powerful when other people say this person was great to work with, they did brilliant stuff. Uh, I am absolutely no person in the world to talk about clothes, as you probably see. But when I first came to Cambridge, to the shock of those who now know me, I did make an effort and tried to look somewhat smarter than my normal scarecrow self. Um, it is worth thinking about what you wear. Social media, you actually, you've picked up on as well, yeah. Check your social media profiles, make sure there's nothing silly, make sure they look smart, professional, decent, because people will look there. And website, if you have a website, just check that. Check that it's up to date, check that it looks okay. Check that it feels modern and check that it feels professional as well. So a little bit of basics there. Think about the basics as well, but good. I mean, you're well across those. Great. Um, this is something you might not have thought about. And actually this really gave me quite a buzz when I was thinking about putting this um, hour together. And it's this, yeah, skills audit. Now I'm not expecting you to be a, a break dancer like this brilliant chap here. Um, gosh, <laughs> I wish I could do those things. I struggle enough to run around the park. Um, skills audit, you may be surprised with the skills you have uh, which you've just taken for granted, but can actually be really useful for you in a new career or a new job. And when I came to Cambridge, I thought I would mainly be working on media relations, public relations, that sort of thing. But I went through all the things I could do and I realized I had more skills than I actually thought. And some of these I've put into courses, training courses and teaching, and they have proved very lucrative. You can have skills which you're not even really aware of until you sit down and think about them, but they can be very valuable to you. For example, with me, BBC News correspondent for 20 years, I had learned without ever thinking about it how to deal with pressure. And I, I now run a course on how to deal with pressure and it is universally popular because it is a modern plague, pressure. Uh, I was taught by the BBC how to do social media in the early days, as you can probably tell from my vintage, I'm not a social media kid, but the BBC taught me how to do it because it became important to us and now I can pass that on and that's useful as well. Um, blog writing. I was also taught to write blogs by the BBC in the early days. And that is another course that I run uh, a lot with Cambridge Network and proves really, really popular. And, uh, and the other one um, is public speaking. Uh, because I'm an author, I've been talking about my books for about 15 years now, learning how to do public speaking. And that is a skill which is in real demand and has served me extremely well. So take the moment just to think about what skills have I got that I'm not really consciously aware of. I just have I just do without really thinking about them and how you can actually use those how they can monetize for you just have a think for a minute now what skills have you got you think, oh yeah I do that or I know about that and I never really thought it might be attractive it's worth thinking about so just have a moment now and if you come up with something you think oh yeah I could do that then send Claire a message stick something in the chat box and, and Claire you you could read them out to us. Um, but it's worth doing. It's worth spending a few minutes doing this because when I did this, it was very valuable to me. And it actually also made me feel quite good. So, oh, I might actually have something useful and worthwhile to offer. And that's a good feeling sometimes. So Claire, anybody come up with any hidden talents in their skills audit? Um, yeah, Alistair's run his audit and he has got negotiation. Yeah, and that's a good, that's a really, really good skill because I mean, let's face it, um, Nearly all of us have to negotiate in life at some point. Well, I expect all of us will be talking about houses and jobs and all that. And we're pretty uncomfortable about it, aren't we? It's always like, oh, the bit where we talk about money, we go, oh, oh. negotiation is a great skill. Yeah. Claire, anything else? Um, yeah, Sarah from our team, listening, I'd second that. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's really good as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's really remarkable how we pick up skills through life and sometimes we're not even aware of them. And you can... You can find them again. So, well, that could be really, really useful. Claire, anything else? Um, empathy. Um, Emma, making brave career moves. Yeah. Uh, facilitating discussions, which is a very good one. Facilitating discussions is another good one as well. And I see so many people who think they can facilitate discussions and they can't. They're really not terribly good at it. Yeah. Um, and career stuff. Um, the reason I'm doing this with you today is that in the last two weeks, Two of my friends I heard were made redundant and they're good friends and they're similar vintage to me, about 50 years old. I know I don't look it. Oh, you're too slow, far too slow. Um, and I, I, they were worried, you know, they're good people. They're good people with good skills to offer. But at the age of 50, you start to think, well, what's there for me? Unfortunately, one of them's already got a job. But anyway, being able to share things like this, it's helpful to me because I did a career change. Claire, any, any others? Um, yes, we have a bilingual English-German. 
German has opened more doors than most things um, for Diana. So um, coaching, uh, building consensus, marketing yourself on LinkedIn. Yeah, great. There's a whole range of skills. So do take a few minutes just to think about your own skills. Do an audit. What have I got to offer? And you could use them in their own right, but also for an employer, it's great to be rounded, to have many skills to bring to the team. So that's terrific. Thank you. Okay, I'm just going to change pace slightly because we're sort of halfway through the session. And this is a touchy-feely thing, but I'm absolutely committed to this. I think it's really, really important. Be true to you. Um, part of the reason I came to, to Cambridge um, and to do something different was I didn't want to waste my remaining years of reasonable energy and brain power in a job where I felt I had done everything I wanted to do. So I had to look inside myself and say, what do I really enjoy doing? What is really the thing that makes me, oh, I'm pleased with myself today. I've actually done something worthwhile. And for me, it was teaching and training, handing on the skills, the things I've learned over the years. And I'm, I'm so lucky and I'm so proud to be able to do what I do, whether it's at the university with some of the youngsters who are brilliant and they're going to be the future of our nation, or whether it's with folk like you and helping you hopefully in some way to, to change your career, find something new and feel fulfilled. Be true to yourself. If you're looking for a new job, and many people are now, we've had the coronavirus reset in life. Think about what do you really want to do? What do you really want to do? I had a wonderful chat with a, an old colleague at the BBC who left on a career break to go to Hollywood to try and make it as an actor. And that was a terrifically brave thing to do. But he said, that's my dream. I'm only going to get one go at it, so I'll do it. So be true to yourself. Think, what do I really want to do? Do I want a full-time job? Have I got a family? Do I want to spend more time with them? What do I really want to do? And I know sometimes it's daunting when you're looking at changing career or you need a new job, but it's also an opportunity. I believe it is an opportunity. So just be true to you. Look inside yourself. What is going to make me happy? Because life and time are our greatest gifts and we don't really want to waste them. So be true to yourself. See what you can find out there. Okay, change gear out of the touchy feel a bit just to show I can do it. Empathy. Something more concrete. Network. Um, how do you maximize, optimize, utilize your network in order to help you find a job or a new career? What have you got in place around you that can help you? How are you going to find new opportunities, potentially a new job or a new career? Um, type in for, um, into the chat box for us some ideas. How are you going to find a new job, a new opening, a new opportunity? What have you got around you that you can utilize? Because you should utilize everything you possibly can. What have you got? Claire, what are people telling us? What are they thinking? What can we use to get a new job, a new opportunity? I think you're probably gonna have to unmute yourself. Sorry, That's yeah, a I, did. I was talking. <laughs> I forgot I was on mute. Sorry about that. So marketing yourself on LinkedIn. I think LinkedIn's a great tool personally. So um, if you use it well. Um, so previous colleagues, um, recommendations, Cambridge Network. Thanks, Tim. Yep, we can help with that. Um, to do a perseverance, um, family and friends, uh, research using LinkedIn, news, research studies, word of mouth and recommendations. Um, help others first and they will want to help you. That's from Catherine. Thanks, Catherine. Um, and asking startups. So lots of making lots of connections is a general um, events. Um, find a mentor is a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Good suggestion. Yeah. yeah, great. Really, really good. Okay. Again, you're ahead of me. Here are some things that I thought about for your network. Contacts. Always start with your home base and your contacts. You will all have lots of people you've worked with lots of people you know, talk to them. People are genuinely helpful. I found in coronavirus possibly the most uplifting thing of this whole mess is how people have really supported and helped each other. And I think that's been admirable and it's been uplifting and we need that lift sometimes. So people will help you. So don't forget your contacts. It may sound obvious, but your contacts. Organizations like Cambridge Network, we've already had one plug for them. I don't want to embarrass the folk from the network who are online, but I can certainly tell you that when I came to Cambridge three years ago, uh, one of the first things I did was join the network um, with a view to finding opportunities, but also teaching and training. And they gave me my first break. It was a business breakfast. It was a couple of hours event when I was talking about how to interest the media in your business, your company, your work. And uh, off the back of that, I made some friends, which was really important in a new town. But I also made some contacts and I found some work from it. So organizations are really worth investing your time in, really worth it. And I can certainly recommend the network and it's for me it's good to give something back to the network because they help me 
enormously. And so it's proud to do something like this. Um, events, there are many events on. Sadly, most of them are online now, but we can go to events. Um, Claire will tell you a little later on about job fair that uh, Cambridge Network are running. There's lots of events, there's lots of networking events online. Think about doing things yourself as well. You can go to talks and panels and webinars, but can you hold them yourself? Would you like to actually be on one of these panels? You can set yourself out as someone who's worth listening to, worth noticing, worth working with. So always think about what you can offer. Could you do a talk? Could you be on a panel? Could you do a webinar? Could you help people? And as we rightly had one of the contributions just now, helping others first is extremely powerful. Really, really powerful. First of all, for you, it's a really good thing for you. It helps you along. It's a great thing for others and society, but I genuinely believe it helps you in a business sense as well, because people like to work with others. And values are becoming really, really important. And social media. As you rightly observe, social media, check your social media, look on social media, have a little play on social media. And on the subject of which, LinkedIn. We've mentioned LinkedIn. Um, I'm not a kid of the social media generation. I'm not going to try and convince you of the power of social media and all that. But I would say it's worth thinking about LinkedIn because um, in researching what I was going to say to you today, one really interesting stat came out and it's about 90% of recruiters look on LinkedIn that the person who's applying was going to be interviewed or is going to be given the job. So if you're not looking decent on LinkedIn, you are in danger of not making the impression that perhaps you deserve to make. So just thinking about LinkedIn for a second, um, how do you do LinkedIn and what should you think about? The first thing, the most basic thing is your bio. This is a friend of mine, someone I've worked with, Rebecca Davis, who does HR, as you can see from that. Um, two points. First of all, your bio is simple, professional, and she says what she does there, but also look at the power of that picture. That picture of someone who's warm and friendly and smiley is really important. People judge a lot by images. So get a good photo of yourself done. Perfectly easy to do on a smartphone these days. Get one of your friends to do it. Remember, you want to look like you would look to someone employing you. So you want to look professional, you want to look warm, you want to look happy, you want to look upbeat, full of energy. It's worth doing. You see some amazing profile pictures on LinkedIn. Some of them look like criminals. They really do. I mean, I can talk. I do look like a criminal on camera. It took photographer who snapped me about 100 efforts to get anything vaguely human looking. But that's what you want. You want a professional look, something smiley, warm, open. Okay. And how do you post on LinkedIn? There's a lot of unpleasantness goes on social media. It doesn't tend to hit LinkedIn so much happily. I find generally it's a fairly warm and supportive environment. And that is the attitude I would take towards it. And I'll just show you a couple of posts which made a mark on me. This was a, a woman I'm connected with on LinkedIn, but I wasn't at the time. And she sent this lovely post out. And, and look at the tone of it. It's gentle, it's thoughtful, it's kind. She's out of a job. She spent a long time looking for a job. And she just asked very kindly, very gently, could you like, share or comment so a message is seen further afield? And that took many people, as you see, it got a lot of likes, got a lot of comments, went around the internet and helped her in her search for work. And I actually commented and sent it on because I was so touched. And I don't often do that with a lot of people I don't know on LinkedIn. So warm, supportive, professional, but kind and human tone. And this is one that I did. Um, in advance of this, talking about two of my friends being made redundant. And I did what you should do. I comforted them, but then I thought, actually, I can do better than that. And that's where the idea for this webinar came in, because I've changed career and I've done a reasonable job at it. Um, so I'm not going to go on and on about LinkedIn, but I will give you this. Um, there's a great group run by a friend, Joe Glover, called The Marketing Meetup. If you look on YouTube, type in The Marketing Meetup, getting the most from LinkedIn, John Esperian. That is a half hour rundown of everything you need to know in order to make the most of LinkedIn. It's really good. John knows his stuff inside out. He's written books on this. It's simple, it's accessible, and it will help you. Just half an hour investment of your time. If you look that up on YouTube, it would help you, okay? And one other thing to mention when you're going online, show not sell. People don't like sell. How do you feel when someone sells at you? You feel like, oh, I'm being sold at. People don't like it. It's also not effective. I mean, selling is not really effective, but showing what difference you make and how you can help, that is effective. What do I mean by that? Well, I mean, let me give you a, a couple of examples. This is a blog I wrote, Imposter Syndrome, and it was um, a careers talk I did at St. Bede's School in Cambridge. And it was 
interesting because I was talking about some of the secrets of success, as you see there, my modestly entitled talk. And one of the things I wanted to talk about is believing in yourself. And I was saying to the group, I didn't intend this to happen. There was about a hundred youngsters there and quite a few teachers. And I said to the group, who here suffers from the imposter syndrome? Who sometimes thinks they're not good enough? And about half the group, about 50 kids, 16, 17 year olds, put up their hands. And then really interestingly, the head teacher put up his hand next to me and I put up my hand and the teachers put up their hands and everybody put up their hands. It's one of the most touching moments I've ever had doing a careers talk, absolutely just out of the blue. I didn't intend it to happen, but it did. And I've done it a few times since deliberately and it's powerful. And I wrote that blog about it and it got a lot of attention. Uh, but the point is, show not sell, I was booked for a week uh, to go to Oxford, the University of Oxford, to do some summer school work with the youngsters there on the back of that because they liked it so much. And that's because I didn't try and sell what I did. I just showed what I did. Show not sell. So it's worth talking about what you do, but in a way which is calm, gentle, the difference you make. And here's another one which also went really well. This was um, a ridiculous experiment I carried out when I needed to get to Maddingley Hall, the Institute of Continuing Education, University of Cambridge, where I was doing something. Um, and I thought I'd hitchhike because it was quite a nice day. <laughs> I don't know why I decided to hitchhike, but I did. And I thought, how will I get someone to pick me up? So I did that little sign and I thought, that's not enough. Um, university tutor, that might work, but I still look like a mugger. So I put like a smiley on there and it worked. Third car that came along picked me up <laughs> and took me to Maddingley Hall. And why? Because of smiley messaging, because I believe in upbeat, positive ways of doing things. And I put that in and that blog got me a bit of attention and got me a couple of bits of work out of that as well. So the moral is don't sell, tell stories of the difference you make. Stories of the difference you make is much more powerful. And here's a website myself and my company did for um, a fellow trainer at the Cambridge Network, Sheila, um, business psychology and coaching consultancy. And uh, what really heartened me about that, we redesigned the website, we did a video for her. And within a few days, she got, I think, four or five more bookings from that. And that's because she was talking on the website about the things she did. And um, so for me, you don't sell, you tell stories of the difference you make, whether it's helping youngsters, whether it's helping colleagues with their websites, whatever it is. So that's important. Don't sell, show, show not sell, show the difference you make. It's really, really important. Right. I want to leave um, a few minutes at the end for some questions. I'm just going to couple, cover a couple more bits. Um, this is really, really important as well. Really, really important. Well-being, looking after yourself. If you're looking for a new job, um, I understand it can be tough because I had moments myself when it was tough. How do you make sure you look after yourself? What is there that you can do to give yourself that little lift in the day when sometimes you need it? Type us a few thoughts in the chat box and Claire can... Claire can tell us and we'll share them. What is it that can give you that little emotional, psychological lift that you sometimes need? I think this is so important because otherwise we can get bogged down and sometimes it feels like we're not getting anywhere. We need those moments just to lift our spirits. Claire, what are people telling us? How do they do their well-being? Okay, um, move, walk, cycle, start the day with a run. So yeah, get physical. Um, sessions like this, um, comedy, getting outside into nature, um, yeah. Just smile. That's a nice one. Smile. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Smiling is really, really good. Yeah. Good yeah. ideas. I mean, these were some of the things that I thought of. Support a network. Structured, a structured day as well. Sorry to cut you off there, Simon. No, that's fine. That was um, really good as well. So kind of having a, um, a structure is really important. So morning for job searching, um, afternoon for new skills, and 5 p.m. some walks and exercises. Course, so that's brilliant. Really yeah, mm -hmm. and then you look forward to the 5 p.m. bit as well. I've got the variety. Variety is really important. Yeah, great. Any others, Claire? Um, helping friends and family, um, doing mm -hmm. some volunteering, um, meditation. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A bit yeah. of yoga as well. Mm, great. <laughs> well, some of the things I thought of, support networks, family and friends, of course. I mean, that's that's primary. Um, we all need those to look us look after us in life. Uh, exercise too it's remarkable I, these days um, since coronavirus has hit us i cannot go without doing some exercise walk cycle ride run just yeah. stretches in in the park absolutely absolutely need that uh, nature i find nature so uplifting i bought a little bird table for my back garden and spread it with some seeds and some and some corn and some fat balls i'm just watching the sparrows and the robins and the starlings and the blackbirds chase each other around it's absolutely uplifting just incredibly tiny little thing but beautiful 
Upskilling, I found that a really powerful lift for my mood is learning something new, really important. It just makes me feel like, oh yeah, you know, this is something I could do, something I could try. I like that. Like, who is writing on my screen? Who is that? <laughs> is that some comment on me? And, um, and also community, sense of community as well. Putting something into the community is really, really important to me. Absolutely, really important to me. Oh, and bizarrely, my chat box has now come back. Turn off the tech sometimes, helping friends and family, volunteering. Walk with your chin one inch higher. You see things entirely differently. What a great idea. What a great idea. Claire, we're doing such a good double act. You carry on doing it. I got to um, walk okay. with your chin one inch higher, which is really good. Yeah. Like that. There's another one from Sophie. A good routine, again, um, but also make time for rest, fun, and laughter with loved ones, helping others with their concerns. Yeah, yeah, really, really good. Yeah, and I think the last one I put, community, it's made me feel good doing little things to help the community. Um, but also, it's got this strange payback thing. It seems to have a habit of people wanting to work with you when they have things that they could work with you. They um, they bring them to you because they, you've got the values that they like. Or oh, there's one nice couple on the end, Claire. What else we got there? We can do. We have um, classical music. Um, really listen. Uh, take time to help others, like startup founders. Great. Yeah, really, really good list. Thank you. Yeah, it's important to build those times in to your day well-being. A great list. Really good list. Really, really thoughtful. All right, um, I've almost finished what I want to say. Um, the final thing I'm going to do is scare you a little bit. Ready for this? Ah! Um, I hope you're scared by Mrs. Thatcher rather than the guy standing next to her. Um, why am I showing you this? It's because of my journey, my three years here at Cambridge. Um, that was one of the earlier things I did at the University Library, helping with some of the media stuff there when they had the Spitting Image Archive come to them. And um, that was a good moment for me because I hadn't always been convinced that the move to Cambridge was going as well as I wanted and was going right. And, um, and that really made me feel like, oh, I've got opportunities here and I met new people and that was really, really helpful. Just show you some other things. This was something else I managed to do at the business school. Those are two of the guys from Google. Got involved doing an event with them. This is important when you're changing career. Um, I was asked to chair this event with two you know, world known business leaders. And um, frankly, I was terrified because there's a big audience in the Judge Business School and there was a huge audience online. And I thought, no, I'm damn well going to do it. I'm damn well going to do it, even though I'm quite leery about it. And I was really glad I did. And I made good friends there and good business from it as well. So an important thing is to, to challenge yourself. Um, keep your sense of humour. I did something at Cambridge Social Media Day and the group enjoyed it so much they vandalised the photo of me. Where's Wally, you might think. Keep your sense of humour throughout it. I know it has difficult days, but you've got to keep your sense of humour and um, keep your family and your friends in your support network. This is really important to me. I had time um, to spend more time with my daughter, Neve. Uh, you've got the best view of me. That's me saying goodbye to her at Sandhurst when she went to train to become an army officer. And she has now commissioned, and she is an army officer. And actually having time to spend with her and help her through the last few months of her degree and into Sandhurst and through it was utterly precious. So make the most of your time as well. You do have an opportunity here. Um, chance to rebalance your life, chance to look ahead, chance to do what you really, really want to do. So the moral from all that stuff is that I had some down times when I came to Cambridge. Um, there were moments where it felt empty and there were moments when I wondered if I was ever going to make a success of it. But I hope that little montage shows you that if you keep trying, you keep believing, you can make a real success of your career change or your new job and not just that. But for me, it's been absolutely rejuvenating. It's been a whole new life and I'm hugely grateful for it. Yes, it can be difficult sometimes. Keep believing, keep the faith, keep going, look after yourself, fall back on your family and friends, keep your sense of humour, but keep going. And it can be incredibly powerful and hugely rejuvenating. So in summary, cracking career change, value proposition, your core message, keep it in your mind, have it ready for when you need it. And don't forget the elevator pitch, how you build on it with your credibility and introduce yourself and a call to action. That will serve you well if you've always got it. The basics, as we discussed, the business card, the clothes, the CV, testimonials, people saying what you do. Skills audit, go and find those skills that you didn't know you had and go and make use of them. It could be really useful for you. True to you, use this moment. Where am I going and how do I make the most of this glorious gift called life? Network, fall back on your network, whether it's contacts, whether it's organizations, whether it's events, social media, brush it up, tidy it up, because recruiters will have a look, particularly on LinkedIn. Show, not sell. Show the difference you make. Don't try and sell yourself. Show the difference you make. Much, much more powerful. 
well-being look after yourself critical really important to look after yourself make time to do that and keep believing there will be difficult days but the thing with difficult days is better days come after them so that's cracking a career change i did it it's been wonderful for me i have every faith that you can do it as well so i hope that's helpful for you um claire you've been kindly looking after things so are there any questions that you can see and then we can have a few minutes to um just have a chat yeah, there's a, um, a very good one here from Miranda, and I think everyone's kind of faced this challenge because of recent changes. But if you're better behind a camera or not so confident in front, how do you over overcome that challenge, given the pressure of being online and in front of the camera is increasing rapidly? Yeah, that's good. Um, practice is the only real answer. Practice. I have a huge head start in this, and I spent 20 years looking at a camera for the BBC, so it really, really helped. Um, but I completely understand it's not easy. It's a cold, hard, unblinking eye, isn't it? It just gawps at you like that. It doesn't give you any human interactions. It's really, really hard. All I can suggest is practice. Um, I have recorded a little video which can help you look and feel reasonable on, um, on camera, um, which I will send a link to uh, Sara so she can send it out with us. Um, but really, it's just a question of practice. Uh, and pace is really important as well. It's tempting, I know, because you're not getting so much of the human interactions and you're a bit nervous to babble through it and, and just get, get, get it done. Um, no, stand back, pauses, breaks. I, I hope this session has worked better for you because I've given you a chance to interact, think about things. It's much, much better if it works as a conversation rather than a monologue, which reminds me, I have also um, recorded a video for the Research and Development Office at the University of Cambridge, which is about 40 minutes long, which takes you through how to do public speaking. And a lot of that stuff is applicable to talking to a camera, just as it would be to an audience. So I will send the links to both this short video, which is three minutes about how to look reasonable on camera, and the 45 minute video, which tells you how to put the content in and stuff together to Sarah. You're very welcome. They're both on YouTube. They're both free. And I'll send those over. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, so yeah, any links would be great. Okay. Wonderful. We don't have any other questions um, at the moment, um, but by all means, follow up with us. Um, if you do think of anything, um, we can always, we talk to Simon quite a bit, so uh, we can always send those over. Um, but thank you everyone. And um, thank you for being so interactive as well. It really helps to make the session run um, and with a bit more of an interest. And um, so thanks Simon, that was excellent. Um, as Simon's mentioned, we will send a presentation, the presentation and a link to the recording out today and anything else you would like. We just let us know and we'll ping that out. Um, I think it was mentioned earlier that Cambridge Network are running a careers fair. Um, we had one in May. It was really, um, really interesting, really effective. We had some really good um, careers experts and we're pleased with the lineup for this one. Catherine um, Vid from Career Ambitions, who's on this session. So hi, Catherine. Um, she will be joining us and running um, a workshop covering career resilience, um, which um, and what's come out, you know, how to, how to go forward with that and how to future proof your career, um, which I think is a really good topic. Um, Catherine's fantastic. She supported Cambridge Network with many of our previous events. So of every confidence that will be a great workshop. Um, we'll also be having um, Belbin as well who will be involved. Um, so everyone that signs up will receive their own individual Belbin report and then we'll have a workshop and then um, hopefully we'll have some companies to join us to talk through their vacancies as well. So that's on the 16th of July. Um, we'll send those details out so you can have a look and if you're free um, by all means join us. So yeah, lovely. I think we're concluded. So yeah. thank you thank so you much. Everyone. Thank you. Good luck, everyone. Yes, absolutely. And use us. Use, use all of us um, where you yeah. need. Yeah, and connect with us on LinkedIn and all that sort of stuff. We'll always do our best to try and help you. Be lovely to talk to you again. Excellent. Great job, as always. Thanks, Simon. Thanks, Claire. Bye, all. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Yeah. Bye.